welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete and we are now four videos and four phones deep into this whole like lifelong iPhone user switches to Android series. To set the scene and if this is the first time you've come across my videos, I've used an iPhone and the whole Apple ecosystem pretty much since the iPhone was launched. And in fact, it was the iPhone itself that really got me into using like a Mac, which then led me to getting an iPad and then to watch and now I basically have a problem. But something that has piqued my interest recently is looking at joining the Android side because, well, for the first time in a decade, I can't currently see any reason to upgrade my iPhone 11 Pro Max to the iPhone 12 and maybe not even the iPhone 13. So I wanted to take a look around and just see what life was like on the other side of the fence. And if you are like me, then this video is going to be taking a look at the Pixel 5 and talking about all of my likes and dislikes to help you decide which is best for you as someone who is switching from iPhone to Android. And shock horror is actually kind of good. Kind of. We'll see. Well, you'll see. I already know because I'm here doing the video. Let us know in the comments down below what phone you are currently using and maybe if you switched from iPhone to Android, which phone did you go with and how have you found it? Like genuinely, genuinely interested to know. Otherwise, let's begin with all of the good stuff that I do actually like about the Google Pixel 5. Firstly, and this is kind of a given coming from the Apple ecosystem, but I really liked the simple setup that takes you through enabling the always on display and adding your accounts and setting up some basic apps like work and personal profiles. Great and a good start to experiencing life like post Apple. Next, and as I said before in my Pixel 4a review, and I'll say it again with the Pixel 5, the size of this phone is incredibly compact and that is definitely a good thing. It's really, really comfortable to use even with one hand and going from the iPhone 11 Pro Max with a screen of 6.46 inches to the Pixel 5's six inch screen. Well, I didn't really feel like I was missing out on anything size wise, that's what she said. But the size is perfect and the aluminium case is plenty grippy enough not to worry about dropping it, unlike the iPhone's much slippier surfaces. And really does make the iPhone 11 Pro Max feel like this, you know, phablet when I pick it up, like really, really giant. That's what she said. Next, and in terms of general usage, it feels really, really snappy. Definitely an improvement on the 4A, which I don't have here to compare side by side, but I really do think that there is a combination here. You know, both the power, given that the 4A used the Snapdragon 730G chip, and this Pixel 5 has a Snapdragon 765G chip. But I do also feel that maybe they've like sped up the animation speeds in a recent Android update, so it doesn't take so long to swipe up and into menus. Whatever they've done, it's a great result. Onto a feature now, rather than my opinion, and something I missed from the Pixel 4a, but was really great to see did make it to the 5, is the water resistance, which is the same as the iPad, I, iPad, iPhone, it's the size of an iPad, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. But it is a shame to see that, like Apple, Google aren't willing to cover water damage under the warranty, which, if you ask me, is just ridiculous. I mean, if it's certified to be waterproof, but isn't, then shouldn't that be covered by warranty? Like, surely? Anyway, you can go see my run on iPhone and how underwaterproof they are in this video. Over to the Pixel Buds briefly. And as you saw in my last video, which hopefully was posted before this one or might be coming soon, I have to say, comparing these to both the AirPods and the AirPods Pros, these are really, really comfortable. And I wish this was something that Apple would do, something as simple as this little rubber tip that will hold them into your ear. And it makes them really, really comfortable to wear for a long time as well. Out of interest for anyone watching who has the AirPods Pros, do they actually stay in your ears? I don't know if it's just like the shape of my ears, but with the AirPods Pros, they just don't stay in. It doesn't matter which size ear tips I use, they need me to just constantly push them in so that when I'm in the gym or on a phone or call or video call, I have to repeatedly push them back in again. But with these Pixel Buds, I don't have to touch them even once. They stay exactly where they should be. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Back to the phone and battery life is good. No huge complaints. I managed to get through full days with enough gas in the tank, so to speak. But if you are a very, very heavy user, then you might want to just charge in the middle of the day or get a battery pack or, or something along those lines. And now we talk iMessage, one of the biggest complaints about switching to Android that most people have. And well, I actually have good news. Kind of a bit unfair at the moment because it's not available to everybody. But firstly, Apple recently introduced FaceTime for Android, so that's pretty cool. And now secondly, I've been testing out a new app called Beeper, invented by the guy who started Pebble, like the first smartwatch. And this app finally seems to be like the one app that I need for all of my messaging. It, it brings together literally everything from, from Facebook Messenger to WhatsApp, Signal, Twitter, Instagram, Slack, Discord, and, and importantly, iMessage. It does need to be installed elsewhere, which is fine because I can have it running on my Mac, but it means that I can properly get iMessage across any device 
including Android. It is a little bit rough around the edges and yeah, admittedly it's not something that everyone will have access to just yet as it is super limited in terms of signups for Beeper, but it will be coming soon to the general public. But because for me, well, iMessage is still very, very widely used along uh, amongst a lot of my you know, family and friends. So it is just nice to not have to lose those chats whilst awkwardly asking people to get to use like something else instead. And then finally, the camera. And I actually think that the camera might possibly be better than the iPhone 11 Pro Max here, which is kind of weird to say because there's almost this subconscious thought now of like, bigger is better. That's what she said. What with the 11 Pro Max being the size that it is and what with the cameras that I'm using to shoot these videos being big like full cameras, that I was genuinely, genuinely surprised at the image quality that came out from this really, really like compact little thing. It's got similar cameras to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, like ultra wide, one times and two times. And then I'll throw a few shots up for you on the screen for you to compare the two. But if you want a really, really in-depth review and comparison, then do let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can come up with. Good stuff over and done. Now let's get on to the negatives because as with anything good, there's always some bad stuff. And if I have made any mistakes here, then please go easy on me and please feel free to correct me in the comments below and tell me how I fix it because this is genuinely me finding my way through our, like this, this whole new operating system. There is plenty of you who have used Android for like the last decade and know it inside out. Yes, I understand that. And I've no doubt that you'll be able to completely roast me because I don't fully get it. I'm like, working on it, okay? Dislikes. One of the first things I do when getting a new phone is install all of the apps that I need. Now on the iPhone, it's as simple as restoring a backup from iCloud. But on Android, I'm yet to find a way to reliably back up and restore across like all the different handsets. And I know that not all Android phones are the same, but I kind of hope there would be like a way to back up from a Pixel 4a and restore to a, like a OnePlus 9 and, and so forth. Again, it's a bit of a niche issue for me as I'm swapping phones so often, but I guess as a brand new Android user switching from iPhone, the one you'll probably hit is when you fire up the App Store and go through the like not on this iPhone section where you can just like tap everything to install. Well, good news is that that is the same on the Pixel. But the bad thing is that installing the apps caused the phone to like noticeably slow down whilst it was installing. You know, the phone noticeably lagged whilst using it. So not really a great start. Though I will say that that was the only time, the one and only time that I noticed it slowed down. So that's a big plus, but just kind of a bit of a buggy thing that kind of surprised me. Back to another thing from the first setup is that I had so many updates to install out of the box. I had to reboot it literally like so many times to count whilst downloading both like major updates, minor updates, general, general knowledge. knowledge, go into the settings menu, find another update, and it just carried on installing them. It was just so, so frustrating. Given that with iPhones, for example, in my experience with iPhones, they typically come with the latest updates installed. And if not, it's just like a one-time update. Press the button and you're done. And even this 10 meg update took an absolute age, mostly on optimizing apps, which it did after every single update. Bit frustrating. Touching on the Pixel Buds again, and whilst they are really, really comfortable and really good, the range on the Pixel Buds is just absolutely awful. More on that in my full review, which will either be out now or coming soon, depending on when you're watching this. But with my AirPods, I can pretty much walk around the house, my whole house, and they'll work regardless of where I am. With the Pixel Earbuds, as soon as I leave the room with that device that they're connected to is in, the audio starts dropping out, which really, really sucks. Because actually I really, really love how comfortable these things are. And I happily will switch away from my AirPods to these things if they just had two things. Firstly, the range, and then the transparency settings that the AirPods have, which I didn't really appreciate before, but now using these Pixel Buds, I definitely do. Back to the Pixel 5 itself, and onto my favorite topic again, notifications. Question to the audience here. On the home screen, underneath like the bigger notifications, like right here, is there any way to group these together? Sometimes I'll get, say, like five messages on Slack, and all I'll have is a row of Slack icons, where it would make more sense to just have one icon to let me know I have messages waiting for me on Slack. Because every time I look at my phone, I have an insane number of notifications, like an endless number of notifications. Really, really annoying. Over on social media, and this is something that I didn't pick up on any of my previous reviews, but the image quality when using apps like Instagram is really, really like potato. There is a whole load of information and threads online as to why, but in summary, and if I understand this right, when using the built-in camera to take a photo with the photo app, it works like we all think. Like camera takes a high quality photo, saves it locally, done. However, when you're in any third party app like Instagram, then when you are taking a photo, the software is actually taking a screenshot of the photo that's on your screen rather than directly accessing the camera. Now this explains exactly why I'm seeing such poor quality and is a bit bizarre to me on how this just like doesn't just work. On the other hand, I can kind of understand it because what well, Apple has to deal with a tiny variation in hardware, kind of phone hardware that they also control. Google on the other hand, who makes the Android software has to write software that 
has to work for all forms of different hardware, you know, different cameras, different screen sizes. So it is nearly impossible for them to do so, apparently, which means it is also impossible for the app makers themselves to access the camera hardware directly when taking the photos within the app. Or at least that's my understanding from my research on how this like all works. So pretty poor overall honesty. And if you are big on social media and specifically creating content within apps like you know, Instagram and TikTok and such, then actually an iPhone might be better for you like legitimately with a real technical and factual reason as to why instead of like just a personal preference. And then lastly, using this for the last thing that anybody probably thinks you should use a phone for nowadays, phone calls. Now Pixel 5 has an underscreen speaker which doesn't sound as good as an actual like real speaker. I'm not exactly sure why they've done this, you know, perhaps to save money or keep it waterproof, but the iPhone is waterproof and still has the speaker grill. But I just found phone calls to be just totally muffled and I couldn't really hear what people like were clearly saying. And whilst it was usable, I didn't really enjoy taking a phone call unless I was using like the earbuds. And then taking this on a step from just phone calls, I don't know if it's just me who does this, but does anyone else lie down and kind of like prop the phone up on their chest to like flick through social media, maybe when they're in bed or something? Because on the Pixel 5, most of the audio comes from the speakers on the bottom, which means when you rest the phone on something, it muffles all of the audio and makes it like just sound really, really quiet. So that's something to be aware of if you aren't kind of, you know, if you aren't aware of those issues with the iPhone. With all of that said, would I recommend the Pixel 5? I don't think I would. Thank you for watching. Please like the video if you did, like it twice if you didn't, and I'll see you in the next adventure.